Okay, hello everyone, it's Jack from Peach here. I'm here today with Stuart from Yamaha. And we're focusing on the uh, brand new Line 6 HX Stomp. Uh, we're gonna create a series of videos based on the fact that rather than create one long review video, what we wanted to do was kind of break it down into segments of what people are actually gonna use this product for, so then that you can just view the, product, uh, view the uh, videos that you wanna see and uh, address the issues that you wanna address. So what we're gonna do here is compare it to its big brother, which is the full-size Helix. And I think this is a question that a lot of people are gonna come across is, what's kind of the purpose for this new HX stump. So do you want to just give us a bit of background as to what inspired the design of the small form factor and how it compares to the big boy? Sure, yeah, and I'd like to say that most of the conversations I've had over the past week since this has really landed have been f with ex existing Helix owners. Okay. So real interest from guys that already own Helix as to why they should have this in addition as well. Uh, the way it compares to this is very simply everything that is in the full Helix or you know LT is in the HX stomp. So you've still got the 200 amp cabs effects, 77 legacy uh, effects, all of this stuff is still in this. Yeah. It's still got the same updates. It's effectively it's the same unit just Smaller. like same engine different chassis basically. Yeah. Okay, so all, so to that point then, all the tones that you're going to hear in this video, uh, what we're going to do is compare kind of A, B, and just to throw a few disclaimers in there, obviously we are different players, but we've set these um, units up so that they're running at the same sort of gain level, and every time we make a change on one unit, we're going to make exactly the same change to the other. Yeah, because there are some operational differences with the way you navigate full mm -hmm. helix or your LT, and the HX Stomp as well. It is very, very simple to use, and we're gonna show that there's really little in the way of limitations when comparing the two. Yeah, okay. So um, as you can see on the screens, we've both got completely blank presets set up. So what we'll do, we'll just add in an amp block yeah. straight away. So to do that, I'm just gonna add it as the first thing in my chain here. I'm gonna scroll down to amp and cab, and I'm not gonna even mess around with this and just gonna put in the first one. So this this first um, first amp model is like a high watt, 100 watt high watt amplifier. I'm gonna leave all the uh, stock settings as they are. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna to touch the cabinet emulation either, which is uh, sort of a Royal ribbon microphone, pretty standard stuff. So I think maybe Stuart, if you add in exactly the same block. Yeah, I'll do the same and you'll see it's exactly the same operation really. There we go. There comes my menu, scroll down amp and cab guitar and then straight away yeah we should have the same thing same yeah. default settings as well but all contained within that one screen yeah so as I said before you're gonna hear slightly different tones because we're playing different guitars yeah there's, there's a definite tal talent deficit here I think oh, <laughs> but, yeah. I don't know I think we'll um, see but the point is that we just want to uh, highlight how easy it is and how it compares to set up the same kind of tones and go about the business that you would go about on this unit mm -hmm. in exactly the same way. And it's very objects. instant, as we'll see. So yeah. do you want to just, just, just give us a lick and I will give you a lick back. Okay, so we'll just I'll just play some open chords so you can just get an idea for the tone. This is going to be strange, it's like having a 20 second delay on or something. Uh, if I'm just going to hear, we're going to mirror each other. So hopefully that will come across that the tones are identical. Yeah. Give or take the differences between the playing and, and the guitars. guitars. The tones are identical. So, and that's, that's a great tone. Mm. I literally just plonked in the first amp model, didn't touch it at all. And <laughs> And this is something we're going to come on to discuss in one of the upcoming videos where I said we're going to detail further about the quality of the modeling that's in this unit. Yeah. That was so dynamic, they're just turning back the guitar volume a little bit, picking a little more softly or digging in. It really affects the way that the, um, the model responds. It's not like a kind of flat sound at all. No, it's, it's real and that, we'll come to that later, the component level modeling. And again, that same response, that same playing experience you're going to get with HX Stomp. 
Yeah. Okay. So should we should we keep on going and we'll start to like for like? Because I, I like the idea that what we're doing here is showing the operation of HX Stomp compared to its big brother and how simple it is. That's so. the main focus here. So we're not going to get into kind of the, um, the differences in all the things that this can do and all the things that that can do um, because we're going to detail everything that the HX can do in separate videos. But the point is, how can you set up the same sounds? Yeah, so let, let's keep going. Yeah. Um, start knocking some, some pedals in there and okay. I'll do the same. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put, uh, I'm just going to move this block along and in front of it, I'm going to add a bit of distortion from my favourite is the, uh, the first one, which is like a clon clone. So again, I'm not going to touch any of the settings. I'm just going to play you the tone without the, without the effect, and then I'm going to add it in. And then, Stuart, you can create the same exact signal path. So here's the dry tone. Okay, so I'll do the same, move it along. So we've got the room, back here, drop in my clon, I put a gate on there just for the noise. <laughs> So again, just putting in the first effects that we found. The sound is great, and it's and it literally copies straight across. So um, one thing that we didn't mention there was just about kind of the way you actually are able to manipulate the controls. So there's quite a lot of the same controls from Helix that find their way onto yeah. this, aren't there? So talk about how you would actually, like we just moved a couple of blocks around and simple That's stuff it. like that. So the actions are the same. So same with the big Helix. If you want to move something, highlight it, press action, and then exactly the same, we can move this around, but this top control here is not like the pot on your big helix where it's, it's a joystick. This isn't a joystick, we've just got to turn it, and that will drop the block in and out where okay. we want it. And obviously with, with the HX, you've got six blocks at a time, so there's not as much maneuvering that you need to do as with something yeah. like this where there's up to, what, 32 at a time? And that's, that's the first difference that you're going to notice is that we've got, we're limited to six blocks, two paths. Yeah. For a lot of guys, they don't really want more than that. A couple of, a couple of good pedals and a good amp sim as well. Well, just taking a look at the blank preset here on the Helix screen, you can see there's only two things on at the moment, but by default, the first thing you're met with is two completely blank lines into which you can add eight blocks each. Yeah. So to, some, to somebody that first powers this up, it could be a little bit daunting to think, what am I supposed to do with all this space? Whereas with that, it's much more, much more simplistic. Yeah, isn't it? it's and that comes to, that brings us to the first idea behind HX Stomp. That yeah, it's a great backup for if you have a, an exist if you're an already existing Helix owner. It's a great backup for your your Helix. Mm. It's a great fly rig, but also if you're new to this entire world, not just Helix but digital modeling, yeah. it's a great in. Because you're not sport for choice, you can get kind of too bogged down in the choices and the the dialing through uh, different parameters and deep editing. You don't have to do that. It's yeah. Very very simple to use. So let's just um, continue on with talking about the operation of actually how you might use it, maybe in a live context. So um, something that people want to know is how you will go about assigning these individual blocks to the switches that are available. Yeah. So on the Helix, you can see there's twelve. Uh, these are called scribble strips. So each of those could say that five times fast. I will not. But you can you can correspond that to switch in different things. Um, so you know theoretically, if you had uh, in this case ten effects units, you could assign ten effects units and switch them on, on and off manually, yeah. couldn't you? Now with the HX, you've only got the three switches, which might seem like a limitation at first, but you can go about it in different ways, can't you? Exactly. It's just creative navigation. Yeah. So it's not really that much of a limitation once you see how it works. So with full Helix, you have all of those foot switches potentially laid out in front of you, and they could be your snapshots, your bank up and down, um, or they could be snapshots and pedals. 
We've got the same thing here at the moment. I'm in edit mode so I can see exactly what's happening with the amp. It's all laid out there in front of me like this. Now if I hit view, that changes things and this is determining what these foot switches are doing. So we've got in this mode, preset up and down. Next page over, that's a bank of three presets. And then there's our snapshots, which we should mention we have a separate video just for snapshots coming up. Yeah. And then this would bring me to stomp mode. So these are now representing, I've got this set up as a, a tap tempo and tune. It doesn't have to be this, we can change that in the preferences. But we've got two blank pedals waiting to be assigned there. Okay, so just to put that into context then, what you were talking about, the three buttons on there at the moment are set up um, and I'll try and explain how that compares to this. So at the bottom right here, you've got the same tap and tuner button yep. by default. Mm -hmm. Now you can't change that on the regular Helix, but on the HX you can, can't you? Can. You? you could make yeah. that anything you want. Um, so if I was to add, let's say I want to take this clon and, and assign it to this switch here to turn it on and off. So all you would do is touch your finger against the side of the button for a second or two. It will ask you if you want to assign this foot switch to that block. I'll hit, oh, I just missed it. I'll hit OK. And so now this button here, I've told it to switch on and off the clone. Yeah. So it works in exactly the same way. We can do exactly the same. So I just highlight the pedal I want, which was our clone, change the view, which is the only real difference, like this, make sure that I'm in stomp mode. And then all I do, same again, touch the side of the pedal, assign it, and there yeah. we have it. And now. So it's really easy, there's no real learning curve to that in terms of how to assign things to your buttons. And as I said um, before, if you're a Helix owner, this is really intuitive, it's very, very easy to use. If you're new to it, you can figure this out yourself. Yeah. It's very, very straightforward. Yeah, so um, like um, Stuart said, we are gonna get onto snapshots as a bigger issue in an entirely separate video. But just as a very brief overview, what it enables you to do is essentially create presets within your preset. So for example, if you want to um, toggle on and off several effects at once, with just one button press, or if you want to equally tweak parameters within those effects. So say you want one, uh, one setting where you've got your gain down low and then another setting where the same distortion effect is with the gain up high, you mm. can do that with snapshots, exactly. can't you? And anything, I like to think of it as anything you can turn, any pot you can turn, anything you can adjust, you can set to be affected by a snapshot. Yeah, yeah. So I think maybe if we just add in one more effect, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna put in a, I'll just change the uh, distortion there. Right, I'm gonna add in one more delay effect. And again, I'm just gonna go for the very first simple delay block and not change any of the settings. There's quite a prominent delay. And I'm just gonna assign the delay to this switch as well, right next to the, uh, the clone. So here now, I've only got three blocks in my chain. I've got two buttons to switch on and off. And you can do exactly the same thing yeah. there, can't you? Just scroll across, this is where I'm gonna drop my delay in. And with the HX stomp, it's this button that opens our models. Drop in our simple delay. And there we have it. And did you roll your, your mix down? Did we do anything? Didn't do anything at no. all. Just assign it to a pedal. Yeah. I missed there as well, there we go. So once again, I'll just give you an idea of what this tone is like. Again, haven't tweaked anything at all. These are just the stock settings when you when you drop drop that block in there. So here's a, here's an A chord. Sounds the same. Um, so just to the end of kind of talk about um, utility, there's so much that the, the, the full-size Helix can do. And in fact, that was kind of part of the reason that the, that the LT came about, right? Was to yeah. just strip back a few of those features that some people felt they didn't need. You know, there's so many kind of ins and outs on, on this unit that you can use that some people just didn't want. With the HX Stomp, it's kind of the same story. You can still do your very basic stuff like, you know, plug the unit into the front end of an amp but you can also still do four cable methods. So if you want to put certain effects in the effects loop uh, and certain effects in the front of the amp, you can do that because yep. you still have, as is displayed here, two separate chains. 
that you can yeah. assign different so you, you can route things differently you can go wet try wet all of the same level of control that you have with lt and full fat helix yeah. full version helix um, and equally you can just run this as a unit straight into the front of house yeah, so that's exactly what we're doing now. Both of these units are just going straight into our recording interface. We're not using any real amplifiers. And as you can tell, they just sound exactly the same. They operate in the same way. Um, we're not going to delve too much into each and every tone that's available because that would take a long, long time. But More videos to come. Yeah, and we just wanted to kind of put across not only the quality of the, the tones that are in this unit, but how easy it is to operate. Um, you know, when you, when you distill it down to the basics, they are the same. You just don't have certain things that this does, but then not everyone wants that. And it's worth pointing out that that's probably about one sixth of the size. It really is, and it's hard when we've got two separate cameras on this to see the perspective, but they look actually quite comical I'm next sure to each James other. I'm sure James can do something clever yeah. with that. Where this is really, in terms of weight, in terms of size, this is, this is a pocket rig. You know, this is really, really small, really light and this will take the place of wherever your full helix can't go. Yeah. Or your full board for that matter, or you know, any, any particular amp live setup that you have. It just enables you to do a lot more. You know, it, for, for me, as a helix user, um, when, when you're at home, you know, if it's in your gig bag that you always take to and fro to a gig, you don't always want to get this, which is quite a big, you know, it's funny that this was considered small and compact when it came out, <laughs> yeah. and now that is small and compact, but, you know, sometimes you just want to sit and play guitar, plugged into your computer or whatever, mm -hmm. and with a unit that's that size... It's desktop. You're it? much more likely yeah. to do that, aren't you? Um, and something that we alluded to before, I, I think is quite useful, is that if you want to delve into the you know, really fine-tuning stuff, it's a little bit nicer to do it on that, I think, because of that intimate nature of it. You know, you don't have that massive, expansive kind of um, overview of everything going on at once. You can just focus on the details you want to focus on on the, on the HX stomp. So to summarize then, there's kind of two, mainly two types of people that that unit's going to be for, right? So we've discussed that someone who's coming from this world already. Yeah, and wants this as their fly rig, their backup. Yeah, and you know, much of the utility is the same, all the tones are the same, you can just, you know, your back will thank you a little bit more. And then there's the complete opposite end of the spectrum, which is people that are brand new to modeling, maybe have avoided this thus far and just want to kind of... Yeah, of their, course, and this is just a really good entry-level product that if you don't want too many options, you want something that's manageable, that's easy, six blocks, two paths, you can't really go wrong with it. Very, very simple. Yeah, indeed. So I hope that was a nice little introduction to HX for you guys. If you want to see more content, like I say, we do have several feature videos coming that's really going to delve into the specifics of what that unit can do because there's so much it can do, we didn't want to just sit and waffle on for for an hour uh, discussing it all and kind of blowing your minds you know if you want to see that you can but if not i hope that this video has served yeah, to highlight we're going to be running some stuff on snapshots how to use those uh, some of the, the the higher end control level yeah we're going to delve into sort of you know running wet dry rigs multiple amps and all that stuff but but for now i hope that's just a nice introduction to hx if you enjoyed this video, guys, you can sub subscribe to the channel and you can check out the upcoming videos shortly. So we hope to see you in one of those. Thanks again for watching. Thank you, Stuart, for your insight. Thank you. Pleasure. And we'll see you again soon. Thanks, guys.